So in today's video, I wanted to talk about uh, Vue.js and specifically I wanted to talk about scope slots. Um, now, when I was learning uh, Vue.js, um, one of the most difficult concepts for me to get my head around was uh, scoped slots. It was quite um, a difficult uh, concept. It's not something that I'd really seen before in, in programming or web development. Um, and I think it's because it's the idea of sort of passing uh, a scope up and then you're basically passing uh, stuff down to a component for it to then render and stuff like this it kind of it gets a little bit confusing as to uh, as to what's actually happening and how it's actually happening so what I wanted to do today was just a quick demo of uh, scope slots and how I basically got my head around them um, I'll show you some examples in the code so um, what I've done here is I've built just a very basic application. Um, I use the term application very loosely because it's literally just a list of um, of games, of, you know, Nintendo games. Um, so if we just have a look here in the app uh, view, we're literally just uh, using this product listing component. Um, we're literally not doing anything else. I mean, we're applying some Tailwind styles here, but that's irrelevant. We don't need to know anything about that. Um, and basically what we're doing is we're, we're just using this component. We're just saying render this product listing here. If we go into the actual product listing, what you'll see is we've got some data down here. Um, this is just dummy data for now. This could be from an API. It could be from anywhere, really. It's Again, it kind of doesn't really matter. It's just that we've got some data. Um, in that data, you'll notice that we've got an ID, a name, a rating, and a price for each particular game that we're displaying. Now, one thing you may have noticed is that the rating isn't actually on here. So that's something that we might want to do later. Um, and that's part of the problem that scope slots are trying to solve. But we'll we'll get to that in a second. But I think the first thing uh, that we should cover is just normal uh, regular slots and how they work. So as an example, if we just go back to this product listing and we were to type in here, say, H1, hello world and we were to literally just uh, pass that in here, then this content within the actual component tags is what's called slot content. This is what you're basically passing from the parent, which is the app view, down into the actual component itself, which is the product listing. Now, it's not displaying at the moment. This is set to hot reload, so it will hot reload, um, but it's not displaying at the moment because we're literally not doing anything with it in the component. So we need to basically say when we receive that data or that HTML, we need to render it somewhere. So just for demo purposes, let's take out um, this. If we just delete this and we just put slot tags in here. And as you can see, hello world is rendered. I mean, granted, it's not the most uh, exciting demo in the world. But if I just do uh, uh, some text, text, text here. Uh, and we go for span, then as you can see, that will get rendered as well. So basically anything that we throw in here is passed into the product listing and it's thrown out here. Um, that's how normal slots work. They're, they really are as simple as that. You've got other things like name slots, um, but we don't need to worry about that for now. So if I just revert this back, back to what we were. So if we just refresh that, you can see now we're back to where we were. Now, with that in mind, you might be thinking, right, okay, well, if we wanted to change how these look using this product listing component, then the only way that we can do that at the moment is by changing the actual product listing component. And you would actually be right with that. So it's kind of like, if we wanted to add anything or if we wanted to change these colors or the, you know anything in here, then you would actually have to change the, the actual component itself. However, what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to pass this data in to the actual component and then we can decide how that looks itself. So just as an example, let's say if we want to determine what, what each one of these looks like. So if we take this div here, knowing what we already know, we'll go, okay, we'll replace whatever's here with a slot. Okay, so they disappear because obviously we're not passing anything in. If I now then open these tags up, and then if we just move these back a little, there we go. And that's basically what you would expect to work, right? So you've got this product listing, 
you're passing in what each one looks like and then we're rendering it uh, on each iteration. Now the problem with this, and you can see with the error consoles below, is that product is not defined on the instance but referenced. And what that basically means is to do with this product here. So if we were to essentially delete this and change that to 1, and so if we were to delete this and change this to 2, this will now render. And the reason it renders is because it's not having an issue calling out uh, to data that it can't see. When it was like this, or just one second, when it was like this, the problem that we had was that it doesn't know anything about product. Product if you remember, is inside this. So you, in, inside this component, you've got products themselves, and then we're basically v4ing over the products to get a singular product. In this component, or this parent component, should I say, we've got no concept of what a product is whatsoever. We've got no idea what that is. So essentially what we want to do is we want to basically get the scope from this component and pass it up to the parent component so that it can use it within these slot tags. And then once you can use it within the slot tags, it means you'll be able to do stuff like this. That's exactly what scope slots do. So how do we use them? Well, the first thing that we need to do is on the actual slot here, this is within the actual component, we want to basically say which uh, of, the, of, of the scopes we want to pass up. So from here, we can basically bind, if we just bind, uh, say, product, and we can bind it here like this. Now what we're saying is that for this slot here that we're using, the actual scope that we want to pass up is going to be product. So that's one individual product each. So that's basically getting passed up each time. So if we now go back into app, so from here we can basically say v slot, um, and then it's the default one that we want. Um, and then on here we want to say slot props because this is kind of what we're what we're aiming to get so if we save that um, as you can see it makes no difference but then what we need to do is we need to go slot props and then put slot props here like this i'll just refresh this quickly if i didn't need to just clear out these errors you can see that that works now what we can do from here obviously is because that scope's now available to us we can now choose how we want this to look so we could kind of put these all at a quarter uh, you have the product name and then say the product rating could decide to put that there um, we could decide that we want to make all of these green Is green 700 going to be too much no that's about right um, and then you can basically do it this way. So now you can see that the parent is now completely in control of how this is uh, being rendered. It's not really anything to do with the actual product listing itself. We are simply just passing down uh, how each one of these should look. And like I say, we can then determine what data we want to show as well. One other thing to note is that we can actually use JavaScript destructuring here. Um, so if we delete this and we were to just put in here, uh, say, product, and let's say we delete these uh, here. We don't need the slot props anymore because we're destructuring it. And then we refresh that and we're still working and we've got no errors. So with this, you can basically see that we're as I say, we're passing the content down into the slot, which is what we're doing here. So this is the content that goes down into the actual slot. Um, so that gets replaced here. But before we do that, we're actually passing product back up here so that we can use it within this scope. Um, and because it's within this here, it basically means that it will be available within these tags here, within from here to here. So this is the new syntax, but what we would do before is rather than having like this V slot here, um, essentially would you would use slot hyphen scope um, and then you would kind of dereference it in the same way. So you would kind of do slot hyphen scope like this. Um, and then obviously you would dereference products there, um, but you can only do that on a on a template tag. So what we would have to do is rather than having it there, you would then need to add in, if I just show you this quickly, uh, so if we just create a template tag here and then, and then say if we take all this in like so and then what we would do is you would do um, slot scope and then you would dereference it just the same 
like so, but then you would have this removed here. Uh, the, the advantage of the new one is that you can do it on the actual, uh, on any pretty much uh, custom element. Um, but with the slot scope, you'd have to do it on a template tag. Now the template tag won't get rendered um, in the final um, in the final markdown. I've got something going on here with divs and stuff, so if I just do that, yeah, that's better. It's a little bit more verbose, whereas the, the newer way of doing it is to just have it literally like this, uh, which I think is just a little bit cleaner and a little bit more obvious. Um, but that's scoped slots. I shall leave a link below uh, where you can read about it. I've written a blog post about this. And if you get any questions, obviously leave me a, a question in the comments below. And if you like the video and enjoy it, then uh, please consider subscribing, leave me a thumbs up, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.